Well, let's pretend that it does, okay? This textbook says, humans and orangutans are 96% similar, proving a common ancestor 15 million years ago. I don't think so. Humans and chimps have thousands of differences, thousands of differences. Overall, this guy says, the genetic difference is only 1.6%. Oh, that's what they used to think, but that's a lie. Barney Maddox was the leading genome researcher on this project. He said the genetic difference between human and chimpanzee is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, that's a gap of 48 million nucleotides. And a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an animal. He said it's not going to happen. That's when they thought the difference was 1.6%. It's still too big of a gap. Now then, later they found out, oh, actually it's a 95% similarity, which is 5% difference. And just recently they said, oh no, wow, look at this, it's 7.7% difference. The difference, the more we study about this, the worse the problem gets for the evolutionist. Actually, it's becoming worse by the day. This result is based on only one million DNA bases out of three billion. They've only analyzed one three thousandth of the human DNA code. A very small percent has actually been analyzed. French and American scientists have mapped chromosome 14, the longest sequence to date, and the site of more than 60 disease genes. The feat enlisted nearly a hundred researchers and marks the fourth of the 24 human chromosomes mapped so far. If somebody tells you they have mapped the entire human genome, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're mistaken or they're lying. Okay, they've only mapped a small percentage. Okay, then it says, uh, the French National uh, Sequencing Center said the chromosome is compared, is comprised of more than 87 million pairs of DNA, all of which have been sequenced, so the chromosome's map includes no gaps. This is the longest piece of contigu contiguous DNA sequenced. 87 million pairs, a fraction of the total 3 billion pairs found in the human genome. They still don't know how much there's in there, and it's already 7.7% difference. This researcher said, Human genome is littered with up to 20,000 pseudogenes. That proves evolution. I get this in debates all the time. They'll say, what about the pseudogenes? I said, there's no such thing. They say, well, yeah, there is. There are thousands of pseudo, which means a false gene. It doesn't do anything. Oh, no. Those pseudogenes serve several purposes. Number one, they serve as decoys to draw you know, poisons away from the real ones. Number two, they serve as backup mechanism. It's like your computer has an automatic backup. You know, if a piece of the memory gets destroyed, another one of those pseudogenes jumps right in, takes over. No, there's not. They took out some of the pseudogenes to see what would happen. They said, well, the mouse doesn't need these things. Let's take them out. And there's how they turned out. They were deformed terribly. No such thing as a pseudogene. The pseudogene may function as a decoy to lure away destructive enzymes. Discover Magazine of 03. We could spend all day on DNA sequencing, but, you know, it could be. We have similar DNA to other animals because we have the same designer. You know, Similar bridges would have similar blueprints, wouldn't they? Similar cars would have...